long-awaited home opener ends with a return to the top of the standings. We will recap it all right now on this edition of North Dakota Hockey Central. I'm Alex Siner. Great to have you with us for the latest inside the nation's top college hockey program. Coming up, we'll hear from head coach Brad Berry on a pair of dominant UND performances against Colorado College and head inside the virtual penalty box with a senior goaltender. But first, let's check out the latest episode of the award-winning web series, Through These Doors. Through These Doors is presented by Gate City Bank. For me, one of the one of the proudest things for me personally is uh, being the fifth generation Louis uh, in my family. So, uh, my dad and grandpa and great grandfather are all named Louis. So, yeah, that's that's probably one of the one of the biggest sources of pride for me and and uh, for my family. So, yeah. The circumstances behind Louis Jammernick joining the team quickly developed, and the moment became surreal upon donning the UND jersey. Just envisioning myself in the jersey was was just a cool moment for me once that phone call to come play. That was my first kind of image, was just being able to, to wear the jersey. And um, and then once it actually happened, it was, it was really cool. And yeah, it's just a really cool uh, experience to get here and actually be on the ice and, and my first time, you know, walking into the rink and onto the ice with, with all the guys and seeing the arena. Yeah, so it's been it's been awesome. Aggression is the MO of his game. When we recruited him, he was a centerman, you know, in junior hockey, and I think that's his natural position at center. But, you know, he's played the wing, and, and I think he's done an outstanding job there. And, and, and the reason why he's doing well on that line is I think they all have similar personalities. Uh, Mark Send and Gavin Hain and Louis Jammernick all have a kind of a, an assertive personality in the fact that on the ice that is where they, you know, they, they forecheck hard, they, they try to possess the puck and, 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 and be strong on pucks and they try to make it difficult on the other team. And, uh, you know, we've had pretty good success with Send and Hain and, and Cole Smith, who's now in Nashville. And, uh, you know, well, now, you know, hopefully we'll have similar success with uh, Jammer on that line. I guess it's one of those things where um, it, it helps with chemistry, especially with him being new guy, just because we all kind of have that same mindset, um, kind of that same style of play. Uh, obviously, we all bring maybe like different skill sets, but as far as uh, a mindset, if we all have that, um, I think that helps the line chemistry. And, in addition to giving it his all on the ice, the Calgary native hits the books off of it, studying aviation. It went back to about uh, when I was seven or eight years old and having uh, both my grandparents, uh, my grandfather's in aviation. Uh, one was a navigator in the Air Force and the other got his private pilot license just for fun. And yeah, those two uh, inspired me to want to be a pilot at a young age. And I was always into those uh, flight simulators and whatnot and um, yeah just always wanted to fly planes really and uh, going through the college process here and looking at schools that had uh, aviation which which I think there was only four or five that do in NCAA did one hockey so uh, yeah I, North Dakota was on the list and obviously they were on the list for number one hockey program as well so uh, it was a huge opportunity and a no-brainer for me and Jammer, as the boys call him, looks forward to forging bonds with his teammates and relishing the tradition within the program. It was a big weekend for us, and I think just sitting there uh, in the in the pregame announcements there when we're calling out the lineups and just the jumbotron and everything, and yeah, it was just incredible just to feel the feel the energy and everything. This is just an incredible group of both coaches and players, and 
everybody's so positive and uh, especially when I got here everybody was very welcoming and any questions I had guys would drop what they're doing and, and show me and just show me the proper way to do things and everybody wants to get better every single day and just the love for for the game is contagious and and it, yeah, it translates in practice. Everybody's having fun in games. Everybody gets get, gets up on the bench and and is excited. And there's not a single guy that's negative or or you know pouty about any situation. And everybody's just picking each other up. And yeah, that's just that's just the right way to play. And obviously, it's been uh, it's shown to be successful here so far this season. As of now, the only jokes we've uh, made with him is when uh, we've had some, uh, when our charter flights have had some rough landings, and we just joked that he's up there in the cockpit. Well, I guess last time we were just sitting on the tarmac for over an hour and trying to get clearance from the Denver uh, airport and whatnot, and the boys are going, you know, they're just joking, like, Jammer, can you hop up there and get us going, or stuff like that, or and they're always asking, you know, what's going on, and to be quite quite frank, I, I have no clue what's going on. I mean, for the most part, I know the general procedures and process of, of what's going on. So yeah, maybe they're fueling up, but but in terms of the, the logistics of, you know, how long it's gonna take or what that, I have no idea. But yeah, it's it's kind of cool though to, to be asked those kind of questions and hopefully in the next year or two, I can uh, give them an answer. So. Good stuff. Thanks to Tyler Hasted, Chad O'Shea, Cassie Niles, and you and these entire Through These Doors team. Coming up next on North Dakota Hockey Central, we will recap the Fighting Hawks return to Ralph Anglesad Arena with the reigning NCHC Coach of the Year. Brad Berry joins us next. Welcome back to North Dakota Hockey Central. It's time now for our usual conversation with UND head coach Brad Berry, who joins us from inside Ralph Engelstad Arena. Brad, your team had to wait a long time to make their home debut this season, but you certainly made it worth the wait. Yeah, I know our guys were excited about it. And, uh, you know, the guys that played here over the last two or three years know what to expect uh, playing here at the Ralph, but it was kind of neat to see the, the, the freshmen coming in here knowing that we played our first 14 games on the road and finally getting back here. They were truly excited, but not only them, but our whole group was, and it was great to be back in the Ralph uh, uh, this past weekend. Now you just mentioned a quarter of your roster prior to this past weekend had never suited up for a game at the Ralph before. How did you and the team prepare those newcomers for what to expect? Well, just probably verbal communication is probably the, the biggest thing, showing a little bit of video too on how we play at home here. And, you know, going back to last year, we had a, pretty good record in an 18 and one record here at the Ralph and you know going back to the way we want to play our identity uh, you know we want to play same home and road but it's extra special when you get to play in Ralph and in the Ralph and last year with a packed crowd it, it was it was critical it was certainly amazing but uh, you know even though there was a limited number of fans it was still a great experience and and hoped uh, got a little bit of a taste for our younger guys. Yeah, even though the REA's capacity was capped at 25% for the weekend, the atmosphere was great from start to finish. How much did playing in front of fans for the first time this year help your group reach the level they did against the Tigers this weekend? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, having a limited amount of fans, it was great to see after not having any fans at all for, you know, our, our first part of our season here. And it brought an extra exuberance to the, I guess, the atmosphere. And I know our guys felt it. And I know us as coaches on the bench, we felt it too. And you know, we had the UND band playing in, in the upper right-hand corner of the rink and, you know, had people cheering through throughout when the goals were scored and, you know, different parts of the game. So it's, it's, it's a big part of the game, and it's, I'm glad we were able to have them back here at the Ralph. Your team was ready from the opening whistle in game number one as you outshot CC 19-5 to in the first 20 minutes on Saturday. From my perspective, that felt like one of your best periods of the season. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, we wanted to try to carry over that second night in Denver. Uh, you know, when we beat Denver 5-1, to uh, you know, we wanted to make sure that our we had the high bar and try to reach that bar early uh, in the series against Colorado College. And, you know, guys were excited about playing at home, which we just mentioned, but also trying to 
carry over some momentum of what we did in Denver and uh, and what we need to do throughout the rest of the year here. That first period, Brad, set the tone for game number one as you go on to win 4-1 in the opener. Your second goal of the night, Gaber to Adams to Pinto on a beautiful three-on-two break. That was the pick of the bunch for me. What does a play like that say about the chemistry and the confidence your team's playing with right now? Well, again, I think it's when you got you know good skilled players, but they play ultra hard and they have ultra high compete level. It, it's nice to have that combination with with our group here, and uh, you know, obviously uh, having making plays like that, uh, it's nice to have that uh, you know as far as on the offensive side of the game. But truly, really uh, admire kind of the, our, our guy, our, the way we play a 200-foot game for 60 minutes here, and and knowing that uh, you know there's momentum shifts in games, and they have to have it uh, right away. That was the first of three goals for Shane Pinto on the weekend. He's now leading the conference in scoring and faceoff win percentage. How has he upped his game in year two with the program? Just to add a level of maturity, you know, coming in as a freshman last year, I thought he did a good job and, and the play, people around him or the players around him helping him get acclimated to, to what college hockey is and the NCAC. But I think it's the added maturity, you know, his body growth, the composition and the strength that's building and, and then also the mental maturity in his game on, uh, on, on, on the way you have to play each and every day through practices and games. So, you know, just being around our culture and our environment, I think, seems to help and it's, it's great to see him taking that next step. Yeah, certainly. Shane's efforts were a big part of the 5-0 win you earned in game number two. Defense was key as well as Adam Shield picked up his third shutout of the year. What stood out to you about your defensive effort throughout the weekends? Well, I just think everybody committed to, uh, you know, the little details of the game as far as defending with good sticks and blocking shots when they had to do it. And, you know, our penalty kill came up at key times this year, this weekend here uh, when it had to. It probably took a little bit too many penalties on the first night, but uh, you know, discipline's gonna be a big thing, but knowing that our penalty kill can do a job, uh, they did an outstanding job this weekend, and Adam Shule was a big part of that. You allowed just one goal over 120 minutes of hockey and did so without two of your regulars on the blue line. How close are Gabe Bast and Ethan Frisch to a return, and how impressed have you been with Josh Rieger and Cooper Moore who have done a great job in their absence? Yeah, uh, going back to Bast and, and Frisch, you know, they're getting close. You know, they're skating in our group here and, you know, they're getting better every day here. Uh, you know, it's one of those things we'll look at as the week progresses here and hope to have one or both of them back here this weekend. And then, you know, going back to Cooper Moore and Josh Rieger, you know, they've done an outstanding job and probably didn't have the most reps or opportunity early on this year. But, you know, over the last couple of weeks, they've done an outstanding job of playing against very good competition here. And, you know, that's... That's the glass half full approach. You know, you have a, you have a couple guys out, but you got to look at the positive side that we've got some guys in here that are getting some experience and are playing very well. Yeah, always a silver lining. Yeah, six points against CC have you back in first place ahead of a road trip to third place Omaha for your first two of six meetings with the Mavs in the next month. What's your read on Mike Gabinet's team this year? Yeah, you know, I think he's built that group over the last couple of years there, and uh, you know, they've got a, a group there that has some depth. Uh, in, in, in all positions and uh, it's a situation where they played a lot of home games and and uh, they play very well at home and uh, you know we obviously we played there in the pod uh, early on in the season we didn't play those that their team but uh, now we have six games coming up here against them uh, in a remaining eight and uh, and again we want to make sure that we get after it right away in Omaha. You played 10 games in Baxter Arena in December. How do you use that familiarity to your advantage this weekend? Well, I think we know just about every uh, nook and cranny in that building as far as uh, you know what, what to expect as far as the rink dimensions and how it plays out and locker room facilities and all that stuff. So, uh, you know, just going in there and having that, uh, that road approach, that road mentality of playing a, a hard, fast game and, uh, and not having to be, uh, you know, too fancy in all different areas. We just got to make sure that we uh, have everybody heads on the same page that like we've been playing in the last few weeks here. Well, at least nobody's going to get lost inside the facility. Brad, thanks as always for the time. Best of luck this weekend in Omaha. Yeah, thanks a lot, Alex. When North Dakota Hockey Central returns, we're talking movie quotes, mask art inspiration, and more in the penalty box with Peter Tomey. Stay tuned. Welcome back. 
This week brings the return of one of our favorite running segments here on NDHC. Senior goaltender Peter Tomey joined me recently in the virtual penalty box to talk goalie quirks and more on the 2021 premiere of You Sit. Peter Tomey, senior goaltender, welcome to the virtual penalty box. Uh, thank you for having me here. This is uh, quite the penalty box. <laughs> In a previous you sit from years ago, I asked former UND goaltender Cam Johnson if he thought goaltenders were by nature weird people. He said yes. Oof, goalies are weird. I'm going to ask you the same question, Pete. Are goaltenders weird by nature? Uh, I think I think definitely yes. Um, <laughs> um, that's not to say all goalies are, you know, weird. But um, like for instance, I think me, Adam, and Harrison are are one of the more normal uh, goalie trios you'll find, but uh, like we all have our quirks for sure. And that's not to say that we're normal. We're just normal goalies. So, you know, definitely there's a little weirdness involved. You're normal by comparison to yeah. other weird goalies out there. Exactly. Okay. You exactly. did mention you each bring some unique quirks. What are some of the quirks or superstitions that you bring to the table, Pete? Me? Well... I, I just have a penchant for um, quotes, like TV show quotes, like The Office, you know, whatever, Curb Your Enthusiasm, Parks and Rec, movies, like just they stick with me. I hear them. So I always have one ready to go. Give me an example. Uh, in The Office, right? There's uh, it's over, Michael. It's over. And uh, so uh, like, I'll always say that one a lot where like, uh, you know, we finish with a hard worker or something. Be like, it's over, Michael. It's over. So that one gets thrown out there a lot. There's a there's a lot of dumb and dumber references. A lot of them made by uh, Kierstead. Kierst loves mm. quoting dumb and dumber. Like we were in uh, when we got to Colorado, you know, he did the famous like, ah, oh, Colorado's a lot flatter than I thought it would be. <laughs> Hypothetical situation: You're hurt, Feeney's hurt, Sheila's hurt, or you're suspended. For some scenario, neither n none of you can play. Which of your skaters on this current team would be most likely to step in and perform well in between the goal? Okay. I feel like Keener could just get it done. I don't know why. He's small. He's quick. He might be a little little like a Jonathan Quick, you know, little guy just kind of buzzing around in the net. But I feel like for some reason he could get it done. Or Jasper because, um, you know, he has some of that goalie weirdness in him. So, like, the personality is there. So you have to think that, you know, the physical attributes would match up as well. Which of the three goaltenders would be most successful either as a forward or defenseman? Okay, so I'm going to say me, but there's not one guy in that locker room that will agree with you, and that's, and that's fine. Was it last year that you got a new goalie mask? I feel like that was last year, right, that you got a new paint job? Yeah. Made the transition from, like, the gorillas to the dragons. Are you a big Game of Thrones guy? Because there's a lot of Game of Thrones stuff going on there. On the yeah. Or did you just think it looked cool? A uh, huge, I, I was still, I'm a huge Game of Thrones guy. I've seen the show, you know, seasons one through seven, probably three or four times. Um, yeah, I, I loved it. You know, the ending wasn't great. What a it's hard show to finish up, but um, it's hard to finish. Uh, I love it. The Night King, obviously, he's, he visually looks awesome. You know, dragons, you know, they be breathing green fire and, you know, the, the big wall um would look good on a mask um so there's just a lot of elements where i was like oh like this you know this could look pretty sweet i missed the white bucket a little bit but this is a good look this is also a good look thanks again for your time get out of the virtual penalty box all right thanks alex peter tell me they're good <laughs> yes <laughs> Ah, Pete, such a good kid and a good sport. He is one of seven seniors on this year's UND team, and we will get most of them in the penalty box before all is said and done this year. Stay tuned. We will wrap up this week's show with a look around college hockey and preview the weekend ahead in the NCHC after this.
Let's look around the college hockey landscape now, beginning with this week's USCHO.com poll. North Dakota and three of the other four ranked NCHC teams made some gains this week in the voters' eyes as UND, St. Cloud State, Minnesota Duluth, and Omaha all moved up a place or two from last week. DU dropped a spot to 20th, while Boston College remains number one for the second week in a row. North Dakota might be second in the polls, but they're back in first in the race for the Penrose Cup. UND has a two-point advantage over the Huskies and have played one fewer game. Notably, the Fighting Hawks have a 14-point lead over fifth-place Denver with eight games to play, making a first-round playoff series in the Ralph a pretty strong possibility. This weekend's schedule was shaken up once again with the news of a positive COVID test within the Colorado College program, meaning the Tigers' upcoming series against DU is now off. St. Cloud State and Western Michigan were already on by, so that leaves Duluth, Miami, and UND UNO as the only two NCHC series on the docket. North Dakota's date with Omaha brings a return to Baxter Arena for the Fighting Hawks, a place they went 7-2-1 at one month ago. It'll be their first meeting this season with the Mavericks team that's pushing them for the Penrose Cup. Uh, I mean, it almost has a playoff feel to it. Um, you know, this has uh, you know, a lot of meaning for the uh, Penrose standings. Every team wants to win that Penrose Cup. So, you know, we're almost looking at it like it is a playoff series. You know, anytime you can play the uh, best team in the league, you know, you want to. You always want to play against the best competition. UND and UNO will face off this Friday from Omaha at 7 p.m. and Saturday at 6 p.m. Game 1 can be seen on CBS Sports Network, while Game 2 will be live on nchc.tv. We will cover both games against the Mavs on next week's edition of North Dakota Hockey Central. Until then, on behalf of our Midco SN crew, I'm Alex Heinert. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the hockey.